Hi everyone. I am going to try to do a lot more videos and um, eventually I'm going to try to get back into what I was talking about originally which was a spiritual battle and um, what I've learned in the Bible is this, when you start out talking about how horrible pornography is on marriages and family and the, all these subjects, the spiritual battle, it all kind of everything in the Bible pertains to everything and and also uh, my original original thing was to speak about what God's love is can and just kind of going back and, and reminding our, us that um, the world's love is totally different than what God says love is and so we need to make sure people know what God's what God's love is but today, sometimes I just open the Bible and just something comes up and I'm just like, wow, I should read that. So what happened was I just opened it and I was just kind of skimming through this page and it's in 2 Corinthians. And I came across the word reconciled. So I hadn't thought of that word for the last few days, but that word came up a few days ago in a very interesting way. And I thought, well, that's really cool because we can kind of see, I didn't even think, that's not a word that I, you normally think to look up. So if you're looking up words to look up in the Bible, uh, subjects in the Bible, you think of peace, joy, patience, uh, God, Jesus, um, you don't really necessarily think about reconcile as a word to, to, to isolate and look up in the Bible. So I'm going to read this and I haven't really read it through, uh, in detail. I just kind of, um, skim through it real fast. So I'm going to read this with you and we'll be reading this together. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm going to start in verse 12. And I'm going to go through the end of the chapter, which is verse 21. And what's really interesting is it, it, it says this word several times in just this little bit of passage. So let's see what it says. Uh, let, let's talk about this together. You know, they always talk about in a marriage to, to reconcile, um, uh, a lot of times when people part, they say it's irreconcilable differences. So I'm really curious to what God has to say about that word and what this is talking about here. So it is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12 through 21, and it says, be reconciled to God. Now that's pretty awesome. He's not talking about, uh, obviously, uh, leaving us and not reconciling. He's talking about being reconciled to Him. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. So I had done a video a long time ago. I've been watching some of my old videos and reminding myself. Um, it was kind of like notes to self. It's pretty cool, actually. And, and I was talking about not boasting in appearance and that the insides you know there's we can look good on the outside but not on and um, be filthy rags on the inside and Jesus addressed that with the Pharisees and the Sadducees it and it says right here um, and I'm pretty sure this is Paul talking I would have to go all the way back to the first of Corinthians I see. And see, yes, Paul. 
I figured I really, really, really like Paul. I think I like a lot of people in the Bible. The Bible's awesome. And I think that he just uh, has, he just had so much insight because of his life before he met Christ. Let's go on. It says, for those who boast in appearance and not in heart, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. For if we are of sound mind, it is for you. And I love that word sound mind. It reminds me of my favorite verse in 2 Timothy 1.7 that says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. It's, it's such an awesome verse. I've given that verse to people over and over. Someone gave it to me. But I was going through panic attacks, and it just has been like a blessing that just keeps on going. So I'm giving it to you now in case that might help you. It says, For we are of sound mind, it is for you, for the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge thus, if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all. And those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him, capital him, for God, who, oh, Jesus, because it says, for him who died for them and rose again. So, yeah, we're talking about Jesus. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no, no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. This is one of the most um, encouraging, uplifting things. Is that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He renews us. When we totally follow the Lord and He comes into our life, He makes us new. Isn't that? That's just awesome. Cleanses us, washes us new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation. Sorry, <laughs> I said that wrong. But have you ever really heard that? Um, he, he's giving, given all of us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not inputting their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God we're pleading through us. Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin. And this is in a song. We've sang this song before. So I'm going to have to tell my husband and maybe we can record that and sing that song and record it. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's pretty awesome. You know, I never even really thought about that before until this word has just been in my life for the last few days. But I hadn't thought about it until... I I seriously randomly turned to this page. I don't think it was random. I really don't. I think the Lord directs us and guides us and gives us 
encouragement and wisdom. And all we have to do is just be so willing to open our Bibles sometimes. Just just open it up and start reading. Um, not doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> uh, it could be a passage you're like, uh, uh, um, I'm not sure if I want to read this right now. But this is just awesome saying that we are ambassadors for Christ. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled. It's saying that, that it says, Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, just a biblical... The biblical, it's always good to look at the biblical side. If you ever hear a term that the world is using, I always try to go to the, the Word of God and I try to look it up and see what God says about that. Kind of like the word passion and I looked it up in the Bible and it's, it's totally different meaning. He puts it in a negative context almost every time in the Bible. Compassion is what the Lord loves and what the Lord has for us and passion is usually equated with um, us going after our worldly passions which is not a good thing so just the same as um, concili reconciliation it's pretty awesome to read about it in the context of, of Jesus and what he did for us puts it in a whole new light and it puts it in a pretty awesome one I just thought I uh, and and you know think of it in relationships too and things like that uh, between uh, marriages between people that are are having a rough rough time right now so anyway love you all have a good day and remember that Jesus loves you